Hello and welcome to this video. Today we're talking about securing your AWS servers using Active Directory and Centrify Server Suite. We're going to start this video by launching uh, an AMI. And the reason why I'm doing this is because um, uh, I need to show something about automation and we're going to make some time by doing this. So I'm going to configure this by, uh, you know, enabling, uh, disabling a public public IP and adding some information to the user data and let's go ahead and launch it so uh, what while that happens let's talk first and foremost why would you want to manage your AWS servers leveraging Active Directory the first reason is to to eliminate duplicated administration your users are already in Active Directory and depending on how you have outlined your um, infrastructure you may already have a direct connectivity with uh, uh, with AWS. If that's the case, you can use the same the same users and groups that you have in place to make sure that the identity is consistent. Another reason why you may want to do this is because uh, you want to allow people to log in as themselves. As you can see here, I'm going to go ahead and try and log in uh, to this to this uh, AWS instance, and uh, I'll log in with my username and password. And as you know, for example, with Centrify, you can add additional mechanisms like uh, multi-factor authentication and, and, and those things. The benefit uh, of this is uh, I already know who are valid users because they exist in AD and I can control using Centrify Zones who has rights to access certain machines. In this environment I only have one machine so it's not a big deal. The next reason is, uh, you know, you eliminate the need to manage uh, SSH keys, right? So SSH keys, people, you know, mishandle them. There's a life cycle associated with them. You can you can do that. Another reason why you want is usability. You want uh, your users to have a tool that they're familiar with to perform privilege elevations. For example, with Centrify, you know that you have uh, DZ Do. And DZ do uh, is uh, basically based on sudo, right? So if I need to elevate, for example, and let's just say I need to, you know, vi the etsy password file, uh, let's just say you would never do that, but I would just basically do DZ do vi etsy password, uh, and uh, I'll be able to do that, right? I'll be able to edit the password file. Wrong, wrong uh, spelling here. Uh, you know, I'll be able to do that. And the key here is, um, uh, increased accountability, right? We want to make sure that people can elevate as themselves, but that we can keep track of, th of things at any point. So, what is the way we do that? Uh, sending information to our, uh, you know, security operations. So, if I tail, easy do tail var log secure, what you see is that you know uh, there's an audit trail that shows it was actually Robertson. In here, who uh, you know, opened the Etsy password file as root, right? So people are doing things as themselves. Therefore, we can tie an identity to an action, right? Remember that with Centrify, you know, we provide additional controls. Like for example, if you wanted to protect somebody from running a command, um, you can also add multi-factor authentication at the command level. So that is multi-factor at the command level and multi-factor at the role level, right? Uh, another benefit is time bounding, right? So you can time bound roles that they are available at a certain time. So those are controls that are needed in the modern enterprise, right? So uh, another benefit is attestation, right? So a lot of systems that may be in the AWS, depending on the data classification and depending on the risk profile of the organization, you may need to attest who has access to those systems. And not only that, what roles do they have, um, what commands they can run, how they can access the systems, and what granted them the access to do that. With Centrify, it's a simple right click. I can right click on a system, right? And I can do show effective user rights. I can look at myself in this case. I can see my Unix identity. I can see the role that I have available. So this is my sysadmin role. It was assigned directly to me as a principal in AD. And this is uh, covering the whole organization, right? So the scope uh, is, is uh, the all the systems that I have in AWS. Another benefit is being able to tell, you know, what systems I have, how can I access that system. So with Centrify, you can break down how people access systems and what are the commands that the user can run, right? This extends not only to Unix systems, but also for Windows systems. I'm going to show you that in another video that I'm going to have. 
the, then another benefit is is having the ability to enforce the principle of separation of duties, right? So what is the key here? That you know, if we need to delegate certain functions, right, to uh, certain other principles, and say, well, you know, I want to separate operational activities versus, um, you know, what are um, you know, the typical uh, governance activity. So maybe you have a security group that actually uh, does the governance piece and then your operations groups is in charge of the day by day. With Active Directory and Centrify, you have the ability to delegate those, delegate those tasks, right? And another big benefit is the ability to support any complex Active Directories, right? So there's a lot of uh, architectures out there, you know, one-way trust, uh, read-only read domain controllers, shortcut trusts, cross-forest trusts. All those are supported by Centrify, not only across Linux platforms, but also Unix and Macs as well. So there's a lot of benefits also as well in terms of automation, right? So the key is uh, being able also to leverage PowerShell. So with, uh, with AWS, we have the ability to do PowerShell as well. So Centrify ships with, uh, you know, uh, several PowerShell utilities. For example, there's all the direct control utilities that allow you to do anything that you can do in Access Manager, uh, assigning roles, uh, creating Unix profiles, all through the power of the CLI in PowerShell. By the way, this capability has been available on Unix for a long time. And in Unix, there's a lot of utilities as well. For example, one of the things that I did when I um, when I elevated, when I in, in, put the system online was to, uh, you know, run ADDNS. That will do a, a dynamic update. So I did, uh, you know, AD, ADDNS. Uh, and that would be an, a minus U minus M, and that actually, um, you know, updating updated my my records with uh, um, Active Directory DNS automatically. This is great for automation. And and some of the things that I've done in this particular instance when I'm uh, launching this new instance here is that I've used those automation capabilities. It is very simple. You know, all you need to do when, you know, you either have the utility files inside your, your image. So let's do a DZ do as you dash. So, uh, I have a utility folder. I actually did that baked into my image, right? And I have a bits and scripts in there. So I'm going to go ahead and do and go to the script side. And in here, basically, what I did is I, I baked a, a key tab for a, a service account that can only do the joins. And I added a couple of, of Ruby gems and I baked the the uh, Chef Solo bits in this in this uh, particular image. So you know, if I look at them. And let's make them bigger here. It's very simple. All it's doing is, you know, getting some parameters. In this case, this is not an independent uh, uh, recipe because I can pass those parameters if I wanted to. But I'm making sure that the package is installed. I'm only doing a K in it here, and then I'm out and joining the domain. And afterwards, I can basically do cleanup if needed as well. I can add either the Centrify agent, the Direct Audit agent, or the CPS CLI toolkit in the same way. So what are the things that we're looking for is that if, uh, you know, if we, um, you know, uh, terminate this uh, or if we build one, that automatically they're going to be there. So let's go ahead and do a refresh. And notice that now I have the new instance that is actually running here, right? So all I needed to do was to add the the user data information, right, uh, to my instances. Now I have three running instances. This is the one that I just started, uh, let's see, 299 right here. So if I... I actually have, have a way to rename these instances. Now I can basically go and I have the IP address here. Let's take a look. It's 2.99, and I can just connect to it using PuTTY. If I if I had enabled SSO, I could just look, look do SSO. So let's go ahead and do this with PuTTY. And I want to connect to my system. One of the things that is happening to the system now is that I cannot ping it by name. So I'm going to do the same thing that I that I did with this other system. So I should be able to log in as myself because it's joined to the zone. There's no need for me to provision any users anymore. It's NSS, PAM, and Kerberos, right? And so I'm going to log in, right? And uh, if I go into um, 
you know, all I need to do is do uh, and, and let's let's take a look at this. Let's open a DNS. So uh, DNS management. So I have my DNS zone in here. And this I could have done in my in my actual script. So notice that in here, there's 299 is not there. So if I do a DZ do, and it will be ADDNS minus U minus M, and I'm gonna be asked for my AED password, and uh, I need to type it right. What's gonna happen is that it's going to perform a dynamic DNS update, and I'm gonna go ahead and refresh it, and what you'll see is that I have uh, my new system uh, already there. So that is the idea, right? So that now I can I can basically look at my system and say, hey, you know, now I can actually do that. So uh, let's see, let's do a refresh. This is actually a different, it actually used a different domain controller to do this, but uh, replication hasn't happened. But let's go ahead and, and take a look. Let's look at the system. And let's just see if we can 